In this video, I'm tackling a controversial topic. Should gold be a shiny addition to your retirement portfolio? You've likely got stocks, bonds, and probably some real estate, but what about gold? I love gold. Gold's been in the headlines recently. It's at record highs around 2,150 an amp. And analysts like those at Money Magazine, Bespoke Investment Group, and Proactive Advisor are touting its potential to add return and also diversification. But most investors don't own gold. What if I told you that based on historical data, gold could be a valuable addition to your retirement strategy? Let's be honest, gold's recent price action has been a wild ride. It hit new highs in early 2023, fueled by inflation concerns, and stayed high throughout the year. Gold closed at a record high year-end price of 2,078 an ounce. That was a return of 15% in 2023, not too shabby. And now in 2024, it's blasted even higher, closing above 2,100 an ounce for the first time this March. According to Statista and the World Gold Council, since 1971, when then President Nixon abandoned the gold standard, gold's annualized return has averaged 7.8% a year through 2022, beating out the return on cash, bonds, and even emerging market stocks. There's no question that as an asset, gold has provided positive long-term returns above the rate of inflation, but it still has its detractors. Most famous among them, Warren Buffett. As a value investor, Mr. Buffett says a key principle is that you should only invest in things that serve some practical purpose. That sounds pretty reasonable. When talking about gold, Mr. Buffett once famously said, it doesn't do anything but sit there and look at you. Well, it's pretty funny, actually. I can't argue with that. It doesn't do anything and neither do diamonds or artwork. But they've appreciated over time for hundreds and even thousands of years because of limited supply. Gold is indestructible. Since the beginning of time, all the gold that has ever been mined still exists today. But demand still is much greater than supply. And interest in gold has been increasing as its price heads higher. Volatile stock markets, inflation, uncertainty over the Fed interest rate policy, rising government debt levels, and the geopolitical risk all over the world. These could all be catalysts for increased interest in gold. Its relative status as what's called a safe haven is probably influenced by these current conditions. So what can gold do for a portfolio? Well, diversification is your shield against market turmoil, and gold can be a unique weapon that's in your arsenal. Gold often moves independently of stocks and bonds, meaning gold prices march to the beat of their own drum. Some years, stocks and bonds may be down, and gold might be up, providing excellent diversification. Other times, stocks and bonds may be up, and so may gold. But here's the twist. Diversification doesn't mean throwing everything at gold. There are those commercials on TV that I see, the email and marketing outfits, and the newsletter writers touting doom and gloom who say you should avoid traditional investments like stock and bonds and invest everything in gold. I completely disagree with this approach, and so does Flexible Plan Investments, a turnkey asset management program. They point out that with less than a 20% allocation to gold, you can boost risk-adjusted returns over time. And I'll show you some actual historical numbers later in the video, so be sure to watch until the end. Inflation can nibble away at your retirement savings just like a mischievous little mouse. Most of the time, we don't notice small increases in prices, but we sure as heck have noticed in the past few years, mostly at the grocery store. President Biden says inflation has come down. In case you haven't noticed, inflation is down too and it's going lower. Kind of right. Inflation has come down. Prices are not increasing at the same rate, but they haven't decreased at all. All those price increases are still there. Your money just needs to work harder to keep up with inflation. And historically, gold has held its value against rising prices acting as a potential inflation edge. The World Gold Council highlights studies showing gold performs particularly well during inflationary periods. Think of it like a store of value, potentially preserving your purchasing power. Wow, say that three times. Potentially preserving your purchasing power. 
Okay, I kind of did that. Well, over the years, it's done that much better than just holding on to cash. In fact, I just saw a YouTube short where there was a man who saved pennies for 45 years and finally cashed them all in. Over five hours, these pennies were counted. He saved $5,136.14 in pennies. But these pennies, while still worth one cent, buy a heck of a lot less than they did 10, 15, 20, or 46 years ago when he started. That's how inflation destroys savers who don't invest. All right, now let's be transparent. Gold isn't without its drawbacks. It's somewhat hard to invest in, but a heck of a lot easier than it used to be. Unlike stocks and bonds, it doesn't pay dividends or interest. And that's exactly why Warren Buffett hates gold so much. Its returns rely on price appreciation, meaning that you might miss out on income generating opportunities if you were to place your savings somewhere else. Additionally, gold can be quite volatile in the shorter term, but its long-term volatility is pretty similar to investing in the S&P 500 stock market. And that's what makes it an appealing diversifier. But gold can also test your nerves in the shorter term. So should you add gold to your retirement portfolio? Well, there's no one size fits all answer. It really depends on your individual circumstances like your age, your risk tolerance, and your overall investment goals. But here are some thoughts. I found an interesting study that was run by Jerry Wagner, the president of Flexible Plan Investments. It answers the question, what is the optimal historical allocation to gold in order to achieve the highest return per unit of risk? Now, the most common balanced portfolio that investors employ is one of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. As a test of how well gold can diversify a balanced portfolio, they studied the addition of gold in 5% increments to determine if you increase risk-adjusted returns. In this study, Wagner used the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index for stocks and for bonds use the 10-year U.S. Treasury Return Index. This chart shows the return per unit of risk, or for statistics geeks like me, the Sharpe ratio of increasing the allocation to gold in a portfolio over the period from 1973 to 2021. For reference, a 60-40 portfolio has a Sharpe ratio of 0.944 over that time frame. So you can see that as you begin to add 5% allocations to gold, you increase the return per unit of risk until you get the highest return for that added risk at roughly 20% of the portfolio. All the dots left of the vertical line are allocations to gold that increase the sharp ratio of the balanced portfolio, meaning they are portfolios that lie on the efficient frontier. All the allocations to the right of that line are increasing the risk, but not increasing the return anymore. So all those newsletter writers who say you should have half of your portfolio or more in gold are building very inefficient portfolios with a heck of a lot of risk. And that's why I ignore them. Now this chart shows the performance, the volatility, and the return per unit of risk for gold as a standalone asset, the balanced 60-40 portfolio, and the supposedly optimal portfolio of 20% gold and 80% in balanced. You can see the optimal portfolio and the balanced portfolio have almost the exact same return, but the optimal portfolio of a 20% allocation to gold has significantly lower volatility and a much higher return per unit of risk with a sharp ratio over one. These are pretty powerful statistics to back up the case for owning gold as a portion of a portfolio, with the most powerful one being reduced volatility of the overall portfolio. All right, let's go beyond this hype, because you're gonna hear a lot of it while gold is at all-time highs. Remember, gold isn't just a shiny object. It has historical significance and cultural influence for thousands of years. It's been said that one ounce of gold can always buy a nice men's suit. Back in the roaring 20s when gold was $35 an ounce, it would buy a nice suit. Today at around 2000 an ounce, it still buys a very nice suit. It has stood the test of time as an asset that can at least keep pace with inflation if not outperform it. Investing in gold can be a way to connect with its rich history and contribute to a diverse portfolio. However, don't let emotional attachment cloud your judgment. 
Do your research, understand the risks and the potential rewards, and align your decision with your financial goals. Ultimately, the decision of whether to include gold in your retirement portfolio, it's yours. But by understanding its benefits, its drawbacks, and how gold fits into your overall strategy, you can make an informed and confident choice. I believe that a well-diversified portfolio should include some allocation to gold. How much is determined by your goals, your tolerance for volatility, and what the current market bears. Remember, diversify your portfolio, but don't let the allure of gold blind you to other opportunities. So what do you think? Should gold have a place in your retirement plan? Do you currently have a percentage of your portfolio in gold? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's keep the conversation going. I'd love to hear what you're doing.